Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm sure you know the drill by now, but in case it is your first time here, welcome to my Things You Missed series of Elden Ring. Today we're covering Leonia of the Lakes, specifically the lake itself. East Leonia and West Leonia will be covered in two separate videos later down the line in this series, as they're much higher level areas. If you missed the previous parts, links will be down in the description, and if you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. Let's head straight into tip one. You'll see on my map here the location of Raya the Scout. This is actually the first First time I've ever met this NPC. I wasn't even recording at this point, hence why it's a little bit rushed. I was literally just running around Leonia grabbing the maps so I can show you the whole map when I get to each tip. And I stumbled upon this NPC, I was like, who are you? So let's go through her quest and I'll talk you through what happens. She seems trustworthy enough, right? Right? And she wants us to go kill someone and get her necklace, so let's go! A little bit further northwest you'll come across this seemingly rundown and abandoned shack, and you'll see the map for the area is just to the north of me as well. As we approach you'll see this particularly aggressive NPC with what appears to be a mini oven on his face. You trying to start some of me? He seems fairly nasty, but he does offer to let us buy the necklace off of him. I opted for the more unalivey option though. I'll rip you to shreds. Once he's dead, you can loot his bell bearing, his iron ball weapon, also the particularly unappealing iron mask he was wearing, and finally, and most importantly, Raya's necklace. When you give Raya her necklace, she'll reveal herself as a servant of Lady Tanith of Volcano Manor. Now, I won't spoil what Volcano Manor is or who Lady Tanith is for anyone that hasn't been there yet, but it's a huge optional area that I strongly, strongly advise everyone go to. One of my favourite areas in the game with lots of very awesome quest lines. And obviously, as always, we'll cover the top missable things in that area in a later video. She gives us a sneaky tip of how to get through to the Altus Plateau, which is where we can then get to Volcano Manor from, and also an invitation to Volcano Manor. Also, I should note very quickly here, actually, I'm not going to be religiously sticking to NPCs quest lines throughout these Things You Missed videos. I will do a separate series where I talk you through NPCs quest lines because quite a few of them span different regions so it'd get really confusing for you if I try to incorporate them in these videos. So let me know if you'd like me to focus more on this series first and get this out as quick as possible or if you'd also like me to sprinkle in a few NPC quest line videos as well and if you do let me know which ones you'd like to see. For tip two, the closest site of grace is at the Boil Prawn Shack which is where we just killed the guy in the iron mask. Rest there and make sure it is night time because we're about to go and fight another death bird. As you can see from my map, just as he's spawning, he's right by that bit of rubble there to the southeast of Boilborn Shack. He shouldn't be any more difficult for you than the death bird we killed in Weeping Peninsula, so unalive him and then grab the red feathered branch sword. And for anyone who's played Dark Souls games, this is the red tearstone ring, but it's not as good. As far as I'm aware, the red tear stone ring used to give you plus 20% damage, whereas the red feathered branch sword only gives you 10% damage. And considering you need to be on very, very low health for it to trigger, it's really not worth it unless you're going for some kind of challenge run. But he drops a lot more souls than the other death bird. And again, for us completionists that want to defeat every boss, that's where you can find him. Okie dokie, for the next tip, head to the Lake Facing Cliffs site of Grace, just outside of Stormvale Castle, and you want to head to the southwest, where you will find the Church of Irith. You'll also come across an NPC here called Thops, and as with most churches, you'll find a sacred tier to upgrade the potency of your flasks. Thops has a lot of dialogue, and also gives you a lot of advice for this area, and for the Rhea Lucaria Academy itself, so there's a lot of interaction with him, and I think he's a really fun NPC. I feel so sorry for him, I genuinely do. I love this guy. But make sure you buy all of his sorceries if you want to be able to explore all of his dialogue and then there's nothing more we can do with him for now so we'll move on over to the next tip for tip four we're going to go in search of our first cave for this video and it's pretty much directly below the lake facing cliffs we were at a few seconds ago it is a very very steep drop though so do not try and yeet yourself off you may have one or two broken bones instead follow the path that you see me taking here and you can hop down a few groups of gravestones sticking out of the mountains you then want to run down this giant rock here and then finally, behind the rock and the jellyfish that we just ran down, you will see the entrance to Stillwater Cave. 
Now, just be careful, this cave can be quite treacherous because it's full of poison, absolutely full of poison. All the flowers are poison, all of the mushroom enemies are poison, most of the floors are poison, and the last boss is also in a room covered in poison. Luckily, most of the enemies are pretty easy, and it's a fairly straightforward cave to navigate. The only real bits of importance are, if you follow where I'm going down in this tunnel here, you'll see the Sage's armor set, and you'll also be able to grab some particularly potent poison serpent arrows and a golden rune 5. Just be careful, there's a few of the normal bats in here, and one of them super strong like human-headed bats. There's also lots of poison bloom to be had in here, for if you're crafting lots of poison darts or poison arrows like I do, I love a bit of poison me. Very effective on so many enemies. And then finally, you'll be faced with the Clean Rot Knight. He doesn't have much health, so he's pretty easy to just burst down, but he does have some very devastating attacks, so just watch out. And also, you're in a pool of poison while you're fighting him, so good luck, but I'm sure he'll be down in no time. And then you'll be rewarded with a Winged Sword Insignia Talisman. This is a really cool one, especially if you're using very fast weapons with high combos like daggers, because this makes your weapons deal more and more damage the longer your attack combo goes on. So if you're using daggers, rapiers, any other weapons that do lots of quick attacks, this is a great one for increasing your damage. And we're done here, so let's move on to the next tip. Tips 5 and 6 are both very close together, so I'll bundle them together and cover them both at once for you. Head to where you see me on the map here, which is just southwest of the Boiled Prawn Shack site of Grace, and you'll see this little bowl containing an item. That item is in fact the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tier, which goes in your mixed physic and increases your dexterity for a period of time. It's a long period of time, I believe it's about 3 minutes, and if you're going with a dex build, it significantly increases the damage of your weapons. I will actually be using it to down a few of the bosses later on in this video, Once you're done there, come further to the southeast to this island here, you'll see a site of grace and patches. Refrain from murdering him for now, <laughs> and he will talk to you about Raya, and also advises you of an enemy that can supposedly teleport you. Of course, take everything Patches says with a pinch of salt, but without spoiling anything, I can tell you that there is an element of truth in what Patches is saying here. Just like he was in Limgrave, he's still a vendor, so you can buy some more items from him. You can grab Margit's Shackle if you didn't the first time, which also binds Morgoth when you come across him later on in the game. But apart from that, the cookbook, and the gold foul feet. There isn't really much of worth to buy from him. He's a bit of a rubbish vendor, unfortunately. Then you can activate and rest at the site of grace that's right behind him, and you're done here. On to tip seven. If you don't have the site of grace unlocked that I'm currently at, you can just go back to the lake facing cliffs again, and then hop down the mountain using the first group of sticky outy gravestones. May as well activate this site of grace as you're here, and then start heading north. Oh, as we're passing him, if you didn't know, these balloons drop a golden rune six when you kill them, which gives you 2,000 free runes. As you see, I literally just get my bow out, shoot it on horseback, and, and run off again. Anyway, what you want to do, as you see here, is keep heading north, and eventually the cliff will level off enough that you can drop down, do a 180, and run south back down the underside of the cliff, heading towards the cave. Even though I knew where the entrance to this cave was, I still struggle to find it. It's, it's very well hidden, this one, but you can see there it is. Right there, let's hop inside. And we're now in the Cliff Bottom Catacombs. This is an easy enough dungeon to navigate for the most part. There's a Stone Sword Key Room with a questionable helmet. And you can also grab a scythe weapon off one of the bodies as well at some point. Just be careful of all the ogre enemies around. By the time I finished exploring this dungeon, I had completely exhausted all my flasks. It is a bit of a challenge at the lower at lower levels, this one. And then once you've finished exploring everything, you might find, like me, that you're thinking, well, I can see the lever. It's right there on the other side of the room where these stairs are, but how the hell do I get to it? I ran around for like 20 minutes trying to figure this out. What you actually have to do is jump off to the side of these stairs and there's two ogre enemies down here if you're careful you should be able to aggro them one at a time once you've taken them out you can go around the corner be very careful because there's a trap a little bit further down this corridor and another ogre but if you're clever you can use the trap to take out the ogre carry on a little bit further you'll see a ladder up be careful again because there's an ogre on your left but if you take him out, you'll be rewarded with a new Spirit Ashes, which is a spellcaster. 
and then finally, after all this exploring, turn around and look to the end of this hallway and you'll see the lever that you can pull. Now that you've done that, go back up the lift and rest at the grace if you need to. I know I certainly did. And after all of that, after this really challenging dungeon, you're probably thinking, holy hell, if that was the dungeon, the boss is going to be insane. It's literally just an Erd Tree Burial Watchdog. And unlike the second one we thought that had all of the imp ads, the gimmick to this one is it uses magic. But you've already killed two of them. You should absolutely destroy this one with ease. Such a pathetic boss for the end of one of the hardest dungeons up to this point in the game. Once you defeat him, you'll be rewarded with the Kaiden Sellsword Ashes. And if the build you're going for doesn't have much FP and you can't use any of your special ashes yet, then he's a great alternative because he's a bit cheaper and he's, he's just as strong. Honestly, this guy's really awesome. Now for tip 8, go back to the Leonia Highway South site of Grace that I was at at the start of the last tip. And as I'm on my way to the ruins that I've marked on the map here, I just wanted to quickly let you know, Leonia of the Lakes is a giant area. So unlike Stormvale Castle, just be aware I'm not going through every single little thing in this area. I've picked out the 12 tips that I think are the most missable and everything else, hopefully just through natural progression, you should be able to find yourself. So feel free to let me know in the comments if there's anything that you thought that was particularly particularly hidden that I've missed out, I'd love to hear it, and also then we can share it with everyone else and we can all learn together. Once you're here, clear out all the enemies in the area. And I've got to say, how sick is that? That my stance made me duck under that guy's sword swing. <laughs> cool, now you've cleared them out, you'll be looking around thinking, Dom, you're an idiot, there's nothing here. Ah, wait a minute, my friend. Roll into this wooden floor here and it'll break and you can actually get underneath into a little cave. In here is a two fingers heirloom, which will increase your faith by five. Great talisman for faith builds. And also a shabriri grape, which is used for Hayata's questline. I will cover her questline in full in another video if you would like me to. Now let's head back up and on to the next tip. Quick, grab the Glintstone Craftsman's cookbook. So this wasn't supposed to be a tip. I was on my way to the next tip and stumbled across a cookbook I've never seen before. I'll show you the map shortly once I've cleared out the enemies here, but I was literally just passing this tower and thought I'd clear it out and try out my demi-humans as I hadn't tried them yet. And it turns out there's a bunch of awesome stuff here. So once you take out the mage at the top of the tower, you can grab this carrion glint blade staff which increases the power of glint blade sorceries. If you opted to start as a prisoner for your starting class, you would have started with the magic glint blade, which is already an awesome spell. For its FP cost, it does a crazy amount of damage. You equip this staff, it's gonna do even more. And finally, I can show you on the map here exactly where I am. Unfortunately, I only keep it open for a split second because I'm a moron, so I've paused it for you. But you'll see it's just south of this broken bridge that we're heading towards, and it's up on a little plateau. So now we'll head back down and around towards the end of that broken bridge as there's a site of grace there that we can rest at. And then we can get to the actual tip that I was trying to show you. Now that you're at the Gate Town Bridge site of grace, just pass the time until it's nightfall and you'll see there is another Knight's Cavalry boss directly in front of you. And once you defeat him, you'll be awarded with about 6,000 runes and a new Ash of War. On to tip 10, you want to come to the Gate Town North site of Grace here that you see I've just rested at. Again, make sure it's night time and then head slightly south. And we will encounter a Death Rite Bird. He is going to be significantly stronger than the Death Bird that we fought earlier. He doesn't do too much more damage, nor does he have too much more health, but he inflicts the instant death status, which does exactly what it sounds like. If that bar fills up, you just die. And he has a few more moves than the other birds that we fought as well. However, the technique for defeating him shouldn't be too dissimilar to how you beat the other two. And once he has been felled, you'll get about 8,000 runes, and more importantly, the Ancient Death Rancor spell. This is a sorcery, but it's one of the few sorceries in the game that requires both a high intellect and a high faith stat. It's worth specking up to it though, because it's very, very powerful, and it just looks awesome. I mean, listen to the item effect. Summons a horde of vengeful spirits that chase down foes. It's such an awesome spell. So if you are going for a magic build, just keep that one in mind. Once the bird's been defeated, keep heading further north from the site of grace, and you'll come across a scarab under the bridge here. This is one of them ones that teleports away if you get close, so you have to defeat it with ranged weapons. 
as you see, I make a right hash of this. I have to chase him like four times because I just cannot defeat him. And then once he's dead, you'll get the Ash of War shield bash, which I'm not going to lie, I've never used a shield in Elden Ring. I, th I think in the tutorial, I parried a skeleton once. And I was like, right, I've done a parry, not doing it again. <laughs> And then under another of the bridge arches, right by where you killed the scarab, you can grab that site of grace there. And that's it for this tip. We will now move on to the final tip, and it's the final cave that you can find in the lakes. For tip 12, you want to go east and slightly north from the site of grace that we just activated. You'll see another one of the walking mausoleums in front of you. The tip isn't about the mausoleum, but I will give you a quick tip about him as we're here. Unlike the other one that we encountered where you have to chip away at his feet, the build-up that you have to destroy on this one is actually around the mausoleum itself, higher up, around its, what would you call it, like its waist? Does it have a waist? <laughs> I don't know if there's a quicker or easier way to do this, but how I managed to get up there, you see there's loads of groups of spectral knights around him. Each time you destroy a group of spectral knights, he will shuffle closer and closer to the cliff. Once you've defeated them all, he will hug the wall of the cliff. You can run around up to the top, jump on a few of the gravestones, and then jump onto him using your horse. So that's how you get to him. There might be a quicker and easier way, but that's, that's how I did it, and it was easy enough. Now we'll move on to the actual tip, and we'll go into the Rhea Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. Once you're in here, there's nothing of note. There's a crystal knife you can grab at one point, a few platforming sections, lots of lifts, and lots of smithing stones. Clear it out at your leisure and I will meet you at the boss. And this may be the first time you've encountered a Crystallion. Someone in the comments might be able to help us all out with this boss. So as you're fighting it, you'll notice that it is resistant to all attacks and it is not staggerable. It will just eat through your attacks and keep attacking you. However, once you do enough damage to it with strong attacks, eventually it will shatter, it will break. And you'll know this because it will start to be staggered and it will take a significant amount of damage. How I deal with it is heavy attacks and backstabs. If anyone knows of an easier way to take these guys down, please let us all know. But as far as I'm aware, just play the first bit of the fight very defensively, very cautiously, and get backstabs and heavy attacks off. When you see that you've broken it and it starts to stagger and take significant amount of damage, just wail on it and it will just crumble to pieces and once it's dead you'll be rewarded with the smithing stone miners bell bearing absolutely fantastic item there are four of these in the game level one two three and four respectively and you can hand these in as you do with all bell bearings to the twin maiden husks and it will let you infinitely buy smithing stones level one and two so with this bell bearing you can now get all of your weapons up to plus six just like that so once you have all four of the smithing stone miners bell bearings, you can then level up all of your weapons infinitely to a very, very high level. And the somber smithing stones also have equivalent bell bearings. So as we encounter them, I'll call them out in the later videos as well. And that's it. They are what I believe are the 12 most missable hidden things around Leonia of the Lakes. Actually, I think it probably ended up being more like 14 or 15 things, didn't it? Because I bundled a few tips into one. If you've been enjoying the videos, please consider liking and subscribing. And I'll see you very, very soon in the next one. Bye-bye.